We will now commence our third panel discussion for the day. The current economic crisis has or will lead to a record number of businesses being rendered insolvent. Our next panel will discuss whether Sri Lanka has the robust resolution framework necessary in order to resuscitate these businesses. To start off, I would like to invite Dilshani Vijayvardhana, lawyer and board member of Union Bank PLC and former commissioner of the Securities and Exchange Commission of Sri Lanka, on stage to deliver a presentation. Okay. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for inviting me to address this August uh, gathering at a critical juncture of our economic history. Sri Lanka's economy is in a critical state of health. The fact remains that many corporate bodies and even individuals will be bankrupt at the end of this crisis. Many corporates, as we speak, remain in the proverbial ICU state, fighting to survive. Some amongst them will certainly die, while some others, with some external help, can be resuscitated. An efficient, reliable, and transparent insolvency regime is sine qua non for a robust financial system and plays a key role in the reallocation of productive resources, investor confidence, and forward-looking corporate restructure. Under our legal system, when a company is insolvent, it can be wound up under the Companies Act of 2007. In the case of an individual or a partnership, they would be declared insolvent under the Insolvencies Ordinance of 1884. I leave it to you to do the maths as to how updated our insolvency ordinance is. The law on bankruptcy is essentially procedural in nature. Its role is to organize collective regime, ensuring the preservation of pre-bankruptcy entitlement to the maximum extent possible. Till the enactment of the Companies Act of 2007, when a company faced insolvency, the only available option was to wind up that company. However, under the present Act, alternative legal mechanisms are available to resuscitate a company. These provisions will be discussed by me shortly. Before I proceed, I like to flag that there are certain duties, fundamental duties, when a company is facing insolvency. And I'm sure many companies, as we speak now, is in this state, but unaware of this legal obligation. Under Section 219 of the Companies Act, there is a duty cast in law to each and every single director whose company is facing insolvency and unable to pay its debts to forthwith call a meeting of the board of directors to consider, one, whether you should file a petition to wind up the company or to appoint an administrator to run the business of the company. Failure to do so will expose the board of directors and each and every single director to personal liability. I repeat, personal liability. So most directors are completely unaware of these legal obligations or duty. And I think it's in this time of crisis, it is extremely important that you be cognizant of your legal duties. Where a company is not viable, the main thrust of law should be for a swift and efficient liquidation. Due to the time constraint, I will not dwell on this topic, for it is mostly procedural. But hopefully we can discuss it in the panel discussion. As Sri Lanka steps in to its darkest decade with the current economic crisis, many businesses will struggle to survive. The question remains, are there provisions in law to resuscitate them, or should we let them to die? It is a truism that rescuing a business preserves employment, potentially provides creditors with a better return, and obtains for the country's economy the benefit of a restructured, rehabilitated regime. The Companies Act of 2007 has two broad schemes available to resuscitate a company. One is to a compromise with creditors under Part 9 of the Act, 
and voluntary administration under part 13 of the act. Truth be told that unlike other jurisdictions like the UK, Australia, New Zealand, which has the identical provisions according to end, which according to published data shows that these are the most resorted to provisions in these jurisdictions here in Sri Lanka, either due to the igni igni ignorance of its existence or simply incompetence of our professionals to work them. These legal restructuring tools are much buried in our statute books. As they say, never let a crisis go to waste. This may be an opportune time to have recourse to the restructuring tools to resuscitate distressed companies. Part 9 of the Act deals with compromise with creditors. This part sets out the procedure by which a company can enter into a binding compromise with its creditors. What does a compromise mean? It's a compromise, it's a compromise between the company and its creditors, which includes cancelling all or some or part of the debt, or varying the rights of its creditors or the terms of the debt. In the UK, a compromise with creditors, absolutely similar provisions that we have in Sri Lanka, is governed by the UK Insolvency Act of 1986. What is interesting to note is that in such an agreement in the UK is supervised by very trained expert people called insolvency professionals. Now, who is an insolvency professional? They are what we call insolvency practitioners trained as professionals who have gained a very broad, wide practical experience and they are licensed to practice as insolvency practitioners and they are licensed and regulated by a professional body. Sri Lanka has no such profession and in this time of crisis, God only knows we need them. So maybe this is an opportune time to introduce such an expert set of professionals. The other mode to resuscitate a company is voluntary administration under Part 13 of the Act. Voluntary administration is an insolvency procedure for companies having the potential to be rehabilitated. They are in the ICU, not dead, struggling to survive. So for such companies, there is a uh, ventilator option, which is called voluntary administration. This is a new concept under the Companies Act, and it's modelled under the New Zealand Companies Act, which in turn is modelled under the Australia's Corporation Act. And according to data, in Australia and in New Zealand, when a, when the, a company is in distress, this is the go-to sections. But again, unfortunately in Sri Lanka, they still remain buried in our textbooks. Administration is a voluntary process initiated. Who initiates a voluntary administration? It's the company. Why? Because it is the company who knows how good, bad, and indifferent your financial situation is. It is a board of directors who actually know how good, bad, and how critical your state of health is. So it is a process by which, which is initiated by the board of directors of a company. What happens in an administration? When the company is in administration, an independent administrator is appointed. The administrator takes control of the company's business and acts as the company's agent. It also can enter into binding contracts on behalf of the company. Now in Sri Lanka, we do not have professional to become these independent administrators and most if these are worked most likely some accountancy firm will be called upon to be an administrator whether they have the skill set I leave it to the audience to decide however in the UK administrator will assess the business potential whether there is hope for this company to be turned around as I said in the UK which has identical provisions like in Sri Lanka 
for an administrator has to be a qualified insolvency professionals. And I think the business community here should seriously consider looking at the criteria how business prof uh, insolvency practitioners uh, are trained, uh, they are regulated, they are licensed, they are absolutely with very broad spectrum of experience to take a company, turn it around. And we do need such professionals. What does administration mean for a creditor of the company? When an administrator is appointed, there's an automatic moratorium on anything due to creditors. It is not possible for creditors to bring or to pursue any legal proceedings against the company or its assets. There's a moratorium. Also upon the appointment of an administrator, director's powers are curtailed. A director cannot exercise any management powers which is in conflict with the administrator's duties. If the company's turnaround comes out of the ICU and is healthy, then the board of directors will take over control of the company. With the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the UK introduced a new piece of legislation. Unlike Sri Lanka, they seize upon an opportunity to bring about change. And they brought about this piece of legislation called Corporate Insolvency and Governance Act of 2020. Under this act, upon a director's making a statement saying we are insolvent or likely to be insolvent, the court will appoint a monitor. Basically, the board of directors will manage the company, but the monitor will supervise to see whether proper steps have been taken to resuscitate the company, to turn it around. And um, as, as I said earlier, a monitor is again an insolvency professional. Perhaps Sri Lanka should take a leave from such legislations which are specifically designed to resuscitate companies during an economic crisis. Before I conclude, I would like to suggest few ideas which have been successfully implemented in other jurisdictions, just food for thought. In Sri Lanka, the law relating to insolvency is found in the legal patchwork of material. You want to see insolvency ordinance, which is of 1884, which deals with insolvency of individuals and partnerships. Companies, it is under the Companies Act. Then there's state-owned corporations, they are under that particular statute. So it's a myriad of legislations that deal with insolvency regime. Countries like the UK and even India, surprisingly, brought all these pieces of legislation under one umbrella. Uh, I think recently, Murtaza emailed to me um, the, um, I think the committee papers, I think the policy papers in India dealing with the new insolvency and bankruptcy code which is of 2015, and I'm like, oh, wow, oh, great. I'm sure it will take a couple of years for it to be enacted. And I researched on the internet, and I was like very pleasantly surprised. Policy papers of 2015 was implemented in law as their new insolvency and bankruptcy code in 2016, just less than 12 months where well, um, second thing that I think I would like to suggest and you know, discuss further is to bring about this new set of professional calls, insolvency professionals. All advanced jurisdictions have them. They manage, they are very trained, they are basically have particular exams to follow, they are constantly updated with the new knowledge, new business environment, and they are regulated, there is a professional body that you have to be part of. Hence, I think it's an opportune time we look at a professional body set up in this, during this economy crisis. Another session, another suggestion, which I think India has brought about, is setting up a tribunal to look into all these insolvency and bankruptcy matters. Because with a composite tribunal with a, sp a specific expertise and qualification to determine matters relating to insolvency and to do away with 
going to court. Our uh, last resort, unfortunately, has sadly proven to be inept and absolutely inefficient. Also, it is no secret that laws delays is a serious bugbear in our judicial system. India, under their code, which is absolutely salutary, has addressed this issue by stipulating a timeline. You have given 180 days to resuscitate the company. Or you can go to court and ask for extension, but there is time frame. So you can't sit there and let one person with a dilatory tactics prolong this entire process. In Sri Lanka, I think even in the last session, delay. We can't get anything done expeditiously and when it comes to delay, delay is time and delay is money. So I think there's a suggestion I, I, I strongly recommend because when we go to court system, we are bogged there for decades and um, um, a, a, a time base a time-based resolution on insolvency proceeding. Another reason there is delay in insolvency proceeding is lack of information. India set up this amazing new concept called information utilities, which is pretty interesting. You, it's like a portal where you have to upload all your information, uh, your, your accounts, um, your creditor list, uh, your payment schedule. It's, it's, there is a pretty uh, sort of a uh, it's a structured setup where you, as a creditor of a company, could access that portal and get information about your debtor. So in the case, you, you, you technically know what's how good, bad, or indifferent the health situation of the country, uh, sorry, of the debtor is. So another th thought to ponder about setting such a system where information, critical, can be access, accessed by creditors. I think Sri Lanka's financial sector should lobby for change, for a more efficient, transparent, and expeditious insolvency regime in Sri Lanka. When is the time to act? It is now. Sri Lanka is currently reigning with opportunities for change. And when it is reigning opportunities, we should put out a bucket and not a thimble. Thank you.